A Celtic State of Mind has been named as one of seven finalists in the Best International Podcast category at this year's Football Content Awards. We won the Best Football Podcast Award in 2018 and it is a real achievement to be finalists once again. Thank you all for your ongoing support over the last three years. If you have been enjoying our daily content, then feel free to vote for A Celtic State of Mind at footballcontentawards.com. I have added the link to the bio of this episode and the instructions and further links are also on axom.net. You can also vote on Twitter by simply tweeting I am voting for at axompod in at the underscore FCAs for hashtag best podcast. Thank you again for all your support. Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and this episode is a look back to our first ever podcast three years ago. Now the guest that day was Paul Gallagher, the older brother of Liam and Noel, who spoke to us on the 11th of June 2017. Since then, Liam has made a Lazarus-like comeback as a solo artist, re-emerging from the embers of BDI, whilst Noel has released one further studio album, Who Built the Moon, with his High Flying Birds. I first interviewed Paul Gallagher back in 2009, following the demise of Oasis. As you all know, he's the older brother and is 18 months the senior of the man who, for millions, wrote the soundtrack to the 90s, with such era-defining records as Definitely Maybe and What's the Story Morning Glory, and almost seven years older than their younger brother, Liam, who is undoubtedly the greatest rock and roll frontman of his generation. Here is Paul Gallagher with a Celtic state of mind. This is Paul Gallagher. Or Gallagher, depending on which country I'm in. Uh, talking about Celtic. Um, first knew about Celtic in 74 because me dad, well, I think it's one of the only presents he ever gave me. He gave me a Celtic mug that he got from Manchester Airport. I just like the hoops. So from there I was intrigued. And, if, you know, we didn't have an internet in that day and they didn't show any Celtic on TV. But you got Shoot magazine. So you could, you know, you pick the players that were in there. So Jimmy Johnston, the winger. They showed the odd highlight game in black and white. So you kind of affiliated yourself to Celtic back then. And it was like for another 15 years before I seen them in the flesh. That would have been 88, 89... Players Jack Anoski from Poland, uh, Peter Grant, Paul Elliott, Paul McStay, Paki Bonner. You know, just players like that, just class players. I mean, there wasn't wasn't a mega Celtic team back then, but you just know it's, it's, it's in you, isn't it? It's in your right, it's in your soul, apparently, according to Rod Stewart. So yeah, that's how I got into Celtic, and that was me. I think we. I think it was the Scottish Cup final was my first game. You just can't remember because Glasgow, you can't remember anyway. I remember going up there. You sort of remember going to the game. You never remember the score because you're always mullered. And that's just that's just funny. That's the way it is. Um, my dad took me to Main Road, Man City's ground, when I was about four or five. So that'd be early 70s. And he was, I don't know, he was a strange fella. He'd bring, he'd make you, he'd drive, he'd have a car, he'd drive from, I think we lived in Longsight about that time, which is Manchester 13, and he'd drive you maybe five minutes in his car to rush on, then he'd park it, and you'd have to walk the last mile to the ground. Now, we wouldn't be getting there for a three o'clock kickoff. City opened the gates at three quarters time with 15 minutes to go to let people out. He'd walk us in at that time. And if it was nil-nil, he'd say, oh, you haven't missed anything. 
<laughs> and it kind of went on that way until we got old enough to go ourselves, like 12 or 13, when we went on our own to the game, so we went with our mates. But yeah, the, the early memories of of uh, watching City, you know, black and white days, isn't it? Long time ago. Um, Oasis being City fans, well, it, it wasn't all City fans. Bonehead was a red. Tony McCarroll was a red. Gwigsy, Nolan Leon were blues. And I think, you know, United would be winning everything in the 80s, 90s and Liverpool before that. So City didn't win anything. It was like pretty hard being a City fan. But, you know, you believed at some point the good times would come. And it started with Kevin Keegan. Keegan had a brand of football. You know, Al, Al Berkovich, who played for Celtic as well. And he was just Ali Benabia. Great little players, and he, he made us believe, and we got we got the new stadium, and all it needed, you could sense it, all it needed was someone, an owner, to invest in Man City, because everything was there. New stadium, passionate support, all we needed was that initial money. I mean, we got it from Taxin Sinawatra, and he brought Sven in, and then he sold it to our owners now, Sheik Monsoon. and it's gone whoosh. We've gone off to scale, but we've still not won everything we should have won. I mean, we've won two titles, but we should have at least won four. We've won a couple of cups, we should have won them all. Because the, the quality we've had, we've seen on the pitch, I think it's been a bit... I think the owners didn't really know that much when they came in. They appointed a few people that were right and were wrong. They bought a lot of players, they wasted a lot of money. But you can't argue with them now. I mean, we are flying and we've got the best manager in the world as far as I'm concerned. You know, but if if you if you if you read the press daily, you'd think Pep Guardiola was atrocious and Mourinho was the special one and Klopp was amazing and Wenger and Conte and Pochettini, everyone else was mega and Guardiola was rubbish. So therefore, you know, he's just you can't, you, you can't I can't take these media people seriously anyway. Just jokers, just love the sound of their own voices. I mean, City and Celtic have had a, they've had a few connections. Remember, Billy McNeil managed us for a bit. I can't remember the, was it the, we had a playoff game. I, can't, I haven't got the date. Without, without researching it, I haven't got the date, but I remember the day it was Notts County away and, you know, City were in the old second division and, we were on the verge of promotion. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what went on. We were bobbins in the in the first half. Then all riots. It was definitely the eighties, and all riots started around us. I remember Billy McNeil coming on the pitch, telling City fans to calm down. It's like calm down. <laughs> you want to start making changes, mate? Um, who else have we had? We've had Jerry Craney. He was all right at Celtic, but he's. No good at us, no good for us. And then in, in in recent times, you know, City, because they buy a lot of young players and, you know, you, you need to play man men football when you're 19, 20. There's no point playing in against kids in the EDS, in the reserve league. You're not going to know. So City loan, Patrick Roberts, Jason Denier and whoever else to clubs that play in the Champions League at a decent standard and Celtic is a decent standard and if Paddy Roberts can recreate something at Celtic then it, it bodes well for City and Jason Denier I mean Denier kind of lost his way this season I, I thought he'd I thought he'd at least get in Pep's squad but he's not to be he's, he's at Sunderland alone and I I mean with Pep Guardiola in charge I, I, just, I just can't see him getting his getting his chance with us yeah Going on to the old firm, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I still, from the belief that Rangers went bust. They didn't pay the tax, man. They went out of business. They're called Sefco, or whatever name they were given. You can't just go out of business and then recreate yourself four years later. And go, oh, by the way, you know all the times we won them trophies? Yeah, yeah, mega, yeah, we'll just carry on. It's not the way we work with them. The world works. So Rangers, as in the past Rangers, do not exist. They're a brand new club, whether they like it or not. And so Mr Barton, uh, 
at City, C City wasn't all that. I mean, he used to piss me off because he used to take all the corners. And I'm like, he thinks he's Alonso or Iniesta. I remember Spurs, Spurs away in the cup. We had, the, we had one of the great comebacks of all time when he got sent off at half time. He got sent off and we beat Spurs 4 3 after being 4 1 down. Mm. 3 1 down. We come back and won 4 3. And that was in spite of him. And I had a couple of run ins with him at the um, Oasis concerts at the City of Manchester Stadium when he'd been gobby and he was still playing for us. So there's no surprise he's gone. You know, he's gone up there and shot his mouth off to. Scott Brown and whoever else had listened. And today he's been he's been slapped, hasn't he? Five one Celtic. <laughs> Scott Brown didn't even comment. I think he just went, you know what, gobshy. Let him get on with it. Uh, Sam Maras, funny one. We bought him from Her Hervenine in Holland for like six million quid. And it was kind of Stuart Pearce's fault that he didn't he didn't encourage him to play. I mean, strikers are hard enough position. And he, on his day, he was good, but them days didn't come along very often. And the City fans got on his case. And, you know, there's only one way, and that's, that's out. But then he, he arrived in Celtic and up at Parkhead, and he was, he was brilliant for Celtic. In the big games, he came alive. And uh, I'm glad he had a nice career in the end, because he, he was, you know, he, he was inoffensive with Sam Ross. He was, you know, but... In the Premier League, one of the hardest leagues in the world to 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 get anywhere in. So I have no, I didn't work out West Brom. I have no idea where he, where he is now. He's probably in China. Guardiola, well, he's the most sought after manager in world football. He's managed Barcelona. He's managed Bayern Munich. And the next stage, he came to City. Now he didn't just came come to City because you know. Where Manchester City, he came because his two pals work there, Chixi and the other fella. So, you know, he's, they've been after Guardiola for years, and we've got the facilities. I think, you know, secretly, they've got everything in place. They've got the stadium how they want it, they've got the training facilities how they want it, and they've gone to Pep and gone here. Come on. Come on now, Pepsi. Get over here. We've got it all going for you. I mean, where, where can he take us? Well, he's going to, you know, he, he's a winner. So you want to win everything. You want to win the Champions League. You want to win the league. You want to win the Cups. I mean, realistically, this year, my fancy City, a League and Cup double. I don't know which Cup, probably the League Cup. But a League and Cup double, why not? We've got Gundogan, he's not even played yet. Sani, he played a little bit today, but he's not really started. We got Gabriel Jesus coming in from Brazil in January. And we, you know, we, got, we didn't have Aguero. We got company to come back in. We've got a serious squad. And if, I mean, you just look at him. He has turned, he was turned, who I deemed one of the worst footballers at City last season, Alexander Kolarov. He's turned him into a footballer. And if he can do that to Alex Kolarov in two months, imagine what he can do to the better players. De Bruyne, Silva, even Sterling, Fernandinho. I mean, all right, he's got to sort the keeper out because, you know, he's a little bit short, but you don't play for Barcelona if you shit. So it's only one game, but we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll just see how, see how that pans out. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that, 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 that we'll do pretty well this year. And you know the, he will be judged in the Champions League because you know if, if I mean City fans won't judge him on the Champions League in his first season, but you can you, you can write it that the press will be straight on his case. Oh, he didn't win this and he didn't win that, and it's you, you know what I mean. But people shouldn't take any notice of the Murdoch press. We'll just just ignore them. But City, City fans will be happy with the league, the double over United, and a cup. So, you know, a double in your first season, it's what Pellegrini did. So, yeah, that's what you've got to do. And then um, the Champions League groups coming up. It's gonna, you just, you could just see the, the group was totally rigged, you know. 
I mean, don't get me started on UEFA, but, you know, to throw City, Celtic, Munch and God back, the Barcelona in the same group, it's like, pff, I thought, I, I thought Platini was in jail. Or the other fella, Blatter. It's just like they've just got it in for us. But they're going to be great games. Uh, I'm thinking of going up to the Bar uh, Celtic City game with our kid, our kid being Liam, but we'll see. I mean, he's busy and I'm busy. So we'll, we'll see if we can make it. If we can, we can, we can't, we can't. Um, who am I going to support? See, this is it. It's my two teams playing each other. So the, the easiest way I can work out is I'll support Celtic when Celtic are at Parkhead and I'll support City when City are at the Etihad. And that's just the fairest way. You know, and I've had my mates going, oh, if City need a point to qualify and away from home, you're going to chase. It's like, this is, this is my personal thing. It's got nothing. I can't say to Pep, Pep, don't put the ball in the net. You know, it's, it is what it is. It's just my thing. And there are two teams I've always supported all my life and I'm not going to not support them. That's just the way it is. Yeah, the the atmosphere, the atmosphere in well in, in Glasgow in general. I mean, there's two places on these islands that are passionate beyond belief, and that's Glasgow and Belfast. Now, Belfast hasn't got a football team in the big league, but if it did, it'd be mental. Glasgow is off the scale for gigs, the you got the Barrowlands for club nights for anything, and when it comes to football, it's it's far and away the best derby in the world. The noise generated, because it's, you know, it's, it's. I mean, whichever way you look at it, it's a religious thing. Two teams hate each other. Two fans hate each other. In the same city that's been going on hundreds of years, it is what it is. And you don't get that. There's, Manchester derby is a bit, it was a little bit more lopsided with United winning everything in, in City in different leagues. Now it's slowly catching up and I'm sure the passion will get there. But it's got nothing on the Glasgow derby. Nothing at all. It's off the scale. I mean, who can Celtic be wary of in the current City team? Well, unless you've been on, you know, Planet Zog for the last eight years, you're going to be wary of pretty much all of them. Aguero, superstar striker. You, you can get close to him, he'll turn you. You stand off him, he'll beat you. He's just, he's just an absolute bag of tricks. And he's only one. Then you got Silver. I mean, as much as I like Scott Brown playing in Scotland, he's got, he'll have, he won't even get near David Silver. Spanish Dave is just different gravy. Kevin De Bruyne. Oh my God, he's, he's, you know what I mean? Chelsea must be shooting themselves every day for letting him go. Um, Kelechi, who, who I really like, our little, our little kid, he's 19 years of age from Nigeria. He has got the lot, you know, right place, right time, goal poacher, stands on the line, got speed, makes it happen. He can do everything. And he's, he's second in line to Sergio. Then, you know, you got, you got Fernandinho. What a Rolls Royce of a player. Supreme. And then, you know, you, you've got, you got the Nolitos, your Sanis, your Wingers, and this and that and the other. Our back four's pretty decent. I mean, it's going to be, it's a, it's a big ask for Celtic to beat City in both legs. If Celtic get a draw at Parkhead, I think that's, that's, that's a decent result. But I just can't see them getting anything in Manchester. It's, it's just, it's just the way it is. First games are always hard. Barcelona, Celtic. I mean, with all the will in the world, if Celtic can get anything in Spain, then that's like a, you know, momentous climb. But I just say, you just can't see it. You've got to be realistic. Barcelona are a very a very good team. And Celtic haven't got Lee Griffiths. All right, they've got Dembele, but... It's it's very different playing SPL every week to playing against the big boys. So, um, you know, I hope they get something. I just can't see it. Yeah, the, the the financial restraints have really smashed Scottish football. I mean, what Celtic get two million a season from TV rights and, you know, the worst club in the like Hull City or Stoke will get a hundred million. It is ludicrous. 
but it's Sky TV, and if they're making the money, which they are worldwide, then I just can't see. You know, Celtic do well in their own little little way, but they've they've really got to get out of Scotland. And I mean, I'd love to see Celtic play in England, but I, I would not like to see the the, the other lot because they just can't behave themselves. You, you could see the trail of disaster, like in a big long line, down the country when 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 they come to town, and that's 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 their problem. Why should Celtic get get lumbered with their problem? Celtic fans have have been pretty much impeccably behaved everywhere they go. So why should you know Sky are going on about the old firm this and they have to play together? They don't have to play together. Celtic can play wherever they want. I mean, I'd like to see them in England, if not in a, an Atlantic League with maybe PSV Eindhoven and you know team teams of that ilk over over that kind of way. Is it the North Atlantic League? But no, they, they just, they, staying in Scotland is, I mean, it, it just depends what they want. If they're happy to stay in Scotland and pick up trophies and, you know, just going falling further and further behind everyone, then, then that's one thing. If they want to move along into a different league and earn more money, then they're going to have to look at other leagues to play in the English league. I'm not so sure. I'm not, I'm not so sure that the smaller clubs would be happy with that because they'd be pushed further down the list. So. I, I hope to see it, but it's not the be all and end all if it doesn't happen. Well, I think um, I mean I'm a Celtic fan. I have been all my life, and I'm, I'm you know when I'm I'm on social media and I'm and I'm f- fairly vocal about my support for my teams. Now, Nolan and Liam on the other hand, because they had they were professional musicians and they didn't want to alienate. I don't think you know either side. So they really didn't say anything, but that's just that's just common sense, you know. You know how u- u- upset fans from other clubs get when you start nailing colours to the mast. But yeah, I am. Um, Noel's a Celtic fan. Liam's a Celtic fan. I'm a Celtic fan. We're from an Irish Catholic family. <laughs> what team do you expect us to support? City and Celtic. Celtic and City. I, I just hope they're great spectacles. I hope the stadiums are packed out. Celtic will bring a massive support to Manchester. City will bring a few thousand up to Celtic. And I hope there's just, you know, great games. I hope there's no sendings off and, you know, football wins. And that's, that's, I just hope both teams could give good accounts to themselves and everyone's happy. Uh, just carrying on, um, how we got up there to uh, Parkhead. I've got loads of friends in uh, Manchester who we used to run buses, like little mini buses, when we used to go to Presswick. There's a gang of Celtic fans in Presswick, a little group of them. And then uh, from there we went to Blantyre, just outside Glasgow, and there's a more little group of Celtic fans that we know, who are still, we're still in contact with. And there's a gang of us in Dublin. And we'd all meet in Glasgow and just go to the game, home or away. I remember... A, I mean, there's one that's still clear, St. Johnston away in Perth. And I obviously had too much book fast in the bus. Gone to the game. I was fine. But I think, I think, I think the bookie on the way back killed me. I actually fell into a pub and broke my ankle. Not the same ankle I broke at the moment. But um, I remember it was a high step. Who puts a fucking high step in a pub? It's meant to be a low step. Uh, anyway, I remember going to hospital in uh, air of all places, and they wouldn't give me a crutch because they said, "Hey, you're going to go back to England and take one of our crutches." And uh, no, we're not having that. So they didn't give me anything. So that's a limp, limp in, limp out. And one of my pals up there gave me a stick. Oh no, you know, so much, so much for hospitality. Yeah. Yeah, good fun days. And, um, yeah, great weekends going up to Glasgow to watch Celtic. Absolutely great. Uh, not so great if you run into uh, Rangers fans on the on the way out of Hamden when they, they like to throw 50, 50 pence coins through your, through your windscreens and your 
and your and your your lights, and you got to drive back to Manchester with no windscreen. Luckily, we had a, we had a mate on board who was a windscreen fitter, so we didn't lose our deposit. But scary times, great times, but scary times. It's a proper derby. I mean, back in the eighties, early nineties, it was they were kind of rough times. But yeah, I mean, wouldn't change it for the world. Great memories. Yeah, songs at football matches. I mean, we all grew up hearing the Beatles being sung on, on the cop. And the C City fans have always had, you know, they always do good songs. I mean, not as much recently. Yeah, the new fans, the, the singing section has not been as good. But Celtic have always had good songs. I mean, they're just passionate. Just passionate fans. And and there's obviously a lot of them. And they, they've got a lot of time to... To work these things out and test them on the road and yeah i mean oasis being sung at celtic and city well, of course you know you, you you're proud but that's what you get from from a, from a massive band a massive band who have a predominantly working class following will always be repeated on the terraces it happened with the beatles and it's happening with oasis and i think it's great it's mega um brendan Re rogers um celtic manager uh, I always liked Brendan Rodgers, and I think he got a bit of a raw deal at Liverpool. He did great at Swansea. They poached him from there. They were the, they were within a couple of slips from winning the league, and he could do no wrong at Liverpool. But as soon as they lost Luis Suarez, as soon as he instigated his move out of Liverpool, then it kind of went downhill. He tried to replace him with four or five different players, and you can't replace one great player with four or five. You have to replace like for like. And I think that's where he fell down. And then, you know, the inevitable happened and, you know, they all hate him because Liverpool hate anyone who leaves them. Even when they sack them, they hate them. <laughs> if you leave them for big money, you're hated. If you get sacked, you're hated. They burn shirts. They're all mental. It's all a bit silly and childish, but that's what they do up that end of the country. And, um, yeah, he was, he was out of the game for a bit and you know, he, he obviously studied and blah, 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 blah. And then Celtic asked him to go to Parkhead. And he, you're not, there's not many big jobs left in football. You've got your Premier League and you've got all the, the managers in there. And then you look across the World League, you've got your Barcelonas, your Madrids, your Bayern Munichs, your, your big teams that are in the Champions League. And then in Scotland, you've got Celtic. And if Celtic asks you to be their manager and you're Irish and you're a Celtic supporter all your life, it's a no-brainer. And I'm glad the board got the money and backed him because he needed players. I mean, it's all right having the manager, but you've got to give him the tools. I think Trevor Sinclair's a good signing. Not Trevor Sinclair, Scott Sinclair. So I've got Trevor Sinclair on my brain because of City United. Scott Sinclair... I know he played for City and he, he he didn't get a chance, but then again, he shouldn't have signed for City because he was only signed as one of the English quota. So that's up to him and his agent. They've got to ask themselves why, because they were never he was never going to break into that City team, not with the amount of money we've got to spend. But for Celtic, I think he'll be great. Some players just love working under the, the manager they respect, and he obviously respects Brendan Rodgers, so you're going to get the best out of him. I, th I think Dembele was a bargain. Half of them at £500,000 from Fulham. Bargain. If Celtic keep him three, four years, sell him on for 10, 12 million, that is a good deal. Um, who else did he bring in? Colo Torre, experienced. I mean, he's not going to be troubled as much in Scotland as, as he was in England. But, but you need that. You need experience. And, you know, to get him on a free, that's an amazing bit of business. Who else is coming coming the door? I mean, there's a few that should have went. Um, Armstrong kind of lost his way. Gary Mackay, Stephen, he's not good enough. Christie, I just can't see. I can't see them players getting a chance. Was as as the money comes in, they certainly go further and further and further away. I just can't see Armstrong, Gary Mackay, Stephen, Shifty, all of them squad average players. They're kind of getting in the way of the youth the youth players and. They'll all be gone sooner or later. I'd like to see Paddy Roberts give, give him more of a chance. He's he's a, he's, a, he's a very skillful little player, and uh, I hope he gets he gets twenty thirty games this season and, and he does quite well. 
I mean, there, there's no reason why Celtic can't win the treble this season. I think Brendan Rodgers is. I mean, after today's mammoth smashing, I think he's, he'll he'll have the better. I can't see Rangers second either. I can see them third or fourth. This is a, this is a big step up for a new club. They're not the Rangers of old. They haven't got the financial power. Any form of injuries or suspensions, and they're, they're out of bare bones. They've got to play kids. They they just they haven't got any money. They're just skint. Still paying the Queen off. Celtic can easily do the treble, and maybe with the players he's got at his disposal, he really should be winning the treble in his first season. Why not? 